Before America's 2.3-liter EcoBoost, and before Japan's SR20 and B-Series became the tuner's dream, Europe had its own hero, a little 2.0-liter that punched way above its weight. It wasn't loud, it wasn't flashy, but it was tough, rev-happy, and it refused to die. Born from Cosworth Engineering and GM stubbornness, this thing powered everything from rally monsters to grocery getters. And today, it's still getting swapped, boosted, and built by diehards all over the world. Welcome back to Piston Pop, the channel where we uncovered the forgotten, the underrated, and the engines that history left behind. Every week, we dive deep into the stories, the engineering, and the legends that shaped car culture, one piston at a time. If there's a forgotten engine you think deserves the spotlight, drop it in the comments below. It might be the next one we bring back to life. And this is the story of the C20XE, the forgotten Euro masterpiece. In the late 1980s, GM's European division, Opel, had a problem. Their engines were outdated, heavy, and couldn't keep up with new performance standards. They needed something fresh, efficient, and powerful enough to make Europe notice again. So in 1988, they released the C20XE, a 2.0-liter, 16-valve, double overhead cam four-cylinder. It wasn't just an update, it was a complete revolution for Opel. An iron block for strength, an aluminum head for flow, 150 horsepower, smooth delivery, and bulletproof reliability. You could find it in the Cadet GSI, the Astra GSI, the Calibra, and the Vectra GSI, all proudly wearing that bright red cam cover, the one that earned it the nickname, the Red Top. It was the kind of engine you could beat on every day, and it'd still start the next morning asking for more. But here's what makes this engine special. It wasn't built by GM alone. The cylinder head was developed by Cosworth. Yes, that Cosworth. The same company behind legendary Formula One and rally engines. Cosworth's magic touch gave the 16-valve head insane flow efficiency a 46-degree valve angle, and perfectly tuned ports. Early versions were even cast at Cosworth's foundry. These are known as Coscast heads, and they're prized to this day for being stronger and more reliable. Later, GM made their own heads to cut costs. And yeah, they cut corners too. Some suffered from porosity, leading to that dreaded mayonnaise mix of oil and coolant. But the Coscast? Indestructible. And that's why tuners still chase those early heads like gold. The C20XE was built right from the ground up. It had a square bore and stroke, 86 by 86 millimeters, giving it perfect balance. A forged steel crankshaft, durable pistons, and a 10.5 to 1 compression ratio. It could spin past 7,000 RPM with ease. It was smooth, efficient, and tough as nails. Engine builders loved it because it responded beautifully to upgrades. Better cams, better intake, better exhaust, and suddenly you had an engine that revved like a touring car. In fact, the C20XE became the heart of GM's motorsport programs. Hill climbs, rally cross, touring cars, you name it. It earned its place as one of the most reliable four-cylinders of the early 1990s. Then, GM decided to turn it up. In 1992, they released the C20 LET, the turbocharged version of the Red Top. It came with a KKK K16 turbo, forged Molly pistons, stronger rods, and oil squirters to keep things cool. It made 102 horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. Not bad for a 2.0 liter in the early 1990s. This engine powered the Calibra Turbo 4x4 and the Cavalier Turbo, putting GM Europe toe-to-toe -to -toe with cars like the Lancia Delta Integral and Ford Sierra Cosworth. The C20 LET was basically a factory-built tuner engine, durable, smooth, and ready for boost. And this is where things get spicy, because the C20 XE and the C20 LET didn't just perform, they invited you to mess with them. A stock C20 XE can push up to 220 horsepower naturally aspirated with cams, headwork, and a proper tune. Slap on a turbo kit, and even the NA bottom end can handle 300 horsepower with the right setup. But the real beast is the C20 LET. 
Bone stock, it can take 350 to 400 horsepower all day long. Add forged internals, and you're looking at 600 to 700 horsepower builds on a 30-year-old platform. That's why these engines became swap legends. They found homes in Courses, Novas, Astras, even Mark I and Mark II Golfs and Ford Escorts. Compact, reliable, and ridiculously strong. Perfect for track builds or wild street projects. The aftermarket scene for these engines is still alive in the UK, Germany, and Scandinavia, with tuners like Courtney Sport, EDS Motorsport, and Regal Autosport pushing these motors far beyond what GM ever imagined. The C20XE was Europe's K-Series, cheap, strong, and full of potential. But like all good stories, things changed. In the mid-1990s, stricter emissions and noise laws forced GM to redesign the C20XE into the X20XEV Ecotech. It had a new head design, EGR systems, and softer valve angles. It was quieter, cleaner, and also weaker, only 136 horsepower. The raw edge of the red top was gone. Later turbo ecotechs, like the Z20 LET and Z20 LEH, carried the torch with up to 240 horsepower, powering Astra and Zafira VXRs. But they were modern, sanitized, missing the character that made the original C20XE a legend. The C20XE didn't just make power, it won. It dominated the European Touring Car Championships, hill climbs, and rally stages. Its balance, power delivery, and durability made it a motorsport icon. Even today, decades later, you'll find these engines screaming at track days in kit cars and time attack builds. People still call it the best engine Opel ever made, and they're not wrong. It was an engine built in the golden age of over-engineering, when car makers cared about strength more than spreadsheets. The C20XE didn't make, wasn't made to impress. It wasn't made to dominate the internet. It was made to last, and it did. It was the perfect mix of Cosworth brains, German build quality, and GM durability. A true underdog that earned its respect the hard way, on racetracks, in swaps, and in garages around the world. The C20XE proved that legends aren't born in supercars. Sometimes they're hiding under a red cam cover in your neighbor's old Astra. Thanks for watching. I'm Piston Pop, and if you love reviving engines that history forgot, you know what to do. And until next time, respect the builds and keep the legends alive. And goodbye.